Welcome to day 202 of our scripture reading and daily encouragement. Today we're going to cover part of Psalms 119 by covering verses 49 through 104. Then we're going to cover 1 Corinthians 4. Now Psalms 119 is believed to have been written by Ezra, whom we covered a few months ago. Yesterday at the beginning of Psalms 119, he talked about having joy because of integrity. Joy when following and obeying the instructions of God. Joy for those who search God with their whole heart. He said he's hidden God's word in his heart so that he won't sin against God. And we talked about that yesterday. He's asked God for an eagerness to follow God's commands rather than a love of money. He says, turn my eyes from worthless things and give me life through your word. See, he understood the importance of following and living out God's commands given to us in his word versus the things the earth and the world would give him. Today, he says, your promises comfort me in all my troubles. He says, this is how I spend my life, obeying you. I spent my whole goal is to obey you. And the promises you give me in your word comfort me in all my troubles. Guys, that's where joy is found. That's where peace is found. That's where comfort is found. If we only focus, I'm just making this up, but 10% of our attention in him, we can't really expect a ton of joy and peace and comfort and wisdom, things like that. But if we hide his word in our hearts and we make it our goal to try and obey him daily, these things are his promise. These things being joy, peace, comfort, wisdom. There's many more, but these are his promises that we can stand on. And that's what Ezra is doing. He says, your promises, I stand on that. And that's what comforts me when things are going wrong. Now, if we're only giving him like 10%, give him 20. <laughs> if you're giving him 20, give him 30. Keep giving him more and more. I, I, I know it's tough to go from 10 to 100%. But keep giving him more and more and more of your thoughts, your attention, your focus. And before you know it, see, if you start where you're barely giving him anything and you say, I want to get to where I'm giving you everything, it looks like such a huge gap that often we won't even try. But if you keep giving him just a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more, before you know it, God's at the forefront of every thought, every decision, every word spoken. And you'll experience his peace and joy even when people or enemies come against you. And I think about my own life. So many times I was just giving God a small percentage. And I was okay with that. But then approximately 10 years ago when I decided I want to give him everything, it was overwhelming. How do I go from where I am to giving him everything? But I had to make a decision to just try to give him a little more each day. And that's still my decision because I still have so much more growth. But I don't care now if I'm at 60%, 70%, 80%, 90%. I'm trying to give him another percent every day. Because I want him, his thoughts, to be at the forefront of everything I do. I want it to be my focus of everything I do. Every decision, every word that comes out of my mouth, I want it to come through the filter of would this please God? Would this line up with Scripture? Every action, would this please God? Would this line up with Scripture? Now, Ezra says something that I think we can all identify with. He says, evil people try to drag me into sin. Guys, it happens to us every day. He says, but I'm firmly anchored to your instructions. Evil people always try to lure us into sin. It could be gossip. It could be telling lies or us getting angry about lies told about us. It could be cheating, whether you're cheating on a business deal or cheating the government on your taxes or cheating on your spouse. It could be putting your faith in money and things. Evil people will try to lure you into, yeah, but you deserve more and better things, right? And obviously I could go on and on. But Ezra gives us instructions here, the way to avoid it the way to avoid the, being lured into evil by people who are evil is to be firmly anchored in God's instructions. Because during those temptations, we've got to be able to stand firm and say, I'm not going to participate in that gossip. I'm not going to 
believe that lie or tell a lie. I'm not going to cheat the people no matter that circumstance. I'm not going to cave to the lustful thoughts that I need more stuff. But in verse 67, in verse 67, he says something that rings so true for my life that I, I just kind of explained a minute or two ago. He says, I used to wander off until you disciplined me. See, that was me living in that 10%, 20% range. I would give God a little bit, and then I would wander off, and then God would discipline me and bring me back. But he says, I used to wander off until you disciplined me, but now I closely follow your word. I think that used to be my life verse. Maybe still is. But then I decided I'd rather follow him as close as I can each day. It's been a journey to get here. And like I said, there's so much more for my journey to keep getting closer. But the point is, it's up to each of us to make that decision. I can't make it for you. You can't make it for me. We have to make this decision to be encouraged by Ezra's words that we need to get closer to God in everything we do. God is always willing. It's our choice. Now, Ezra says, may all who fear you Find in me a cause for joy, for I have put my hope in your word. I'm going to read that again. Ezra says, may all who fear you, God, may all who live in awe of you, respect for you. Find in me a cause for joy, for I put my hope in your word. In other words, he says, I'm going to live my life fully dedicated to God. And I hope all those who others who want to follow God will see what I'm doing and it will give them joy and encouragement so they can do it too. Now remember, life wasn't easy for Ezra. If we remember back to Ezra, when we read these words, he had many people lying about him, trying to smear his name as God used him in a time to re-inhabit and rebuild God's holy city of Jerusalem. Ezra didn't have an easy life. People were coming against him. People were plotting to get rid of him. But we see here how he made it through that time and fulfilled his purpose for rebuilding the city. He was rooted in God's word. He says, if your instructions hadn't sustained me with joy. So he was in this terrible moment. He says, if your instructions hadn't sustained me with joy, I would have died in my misery. That's how bad his life was. But he found joy in God's instructions. I don't know how much more encouragement we could get out of this. Ezra tells us right there how he sustained rough times and found joy in rough times through following God's instructions. It's so, so simple if we'll just do it. It's clear here that Ezra is still going through a rough time as he writes this. He's being accused of things he hasn't done, many people against him. But do you see the joy and trust that he chooses to have in this time? That should be a huge encouragement to us. Now, as we move over into 1 Corinthians and pick up in 1 Corinthians 4. Remember, Paul's telling them, quit worrying about following the leader. Don't worry about following me, Paul, or Apollos. Follow Jesus. But he begins chapter 4 by stating that he and Apollos were just simple servants of Jesus. See, that person that we're tempted to follow, they're just a servant like we all are. And he says, and I'm going to paraphrase, he says, it doesn't really matter what you think about me or what I say because I only care about what God thinks. See, if we have this attitude, then we'll learn God's ways and we'll walk those out and we'll teach those ways and we won't let the world influence us or stop us. And that's where we need to strive to be exactly where Paul is here. He's not saying he doesn't care about what they think. Like, I just don't care. He's saying, my care is in what God thinks, not what you think about me. So I'm going to do nothing but follow God. And you're going to think I'm an idiot, but that's okay. I don't care. I only care about being faithful to Jesus as a servant. That's all that matters. He's saying, I'm going to answer to God, not to these men. And that's all I care about. And that right there is our example. And that's where we should be. And that should give us encouragement. He says that his dedication and the other apostles' dedication to Jesus makes them look like fools to the world. When you tell people you follow Jesus, you ever get funny looks? You ever get people that say, yeah, but even Christians? Because I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to be the same for each of us. 
If something bad happens and I say something as simple as, well, I know this bad thing happened, but I trust God's plan, even when I can't see a good outcome, I'm often greeted by words like, yeah, but, yeah, Jason, but God gives wisdom and God punishes and blah, blah, blah. Paul is warning them and us that even people who say they're Christ followers will claim to be wise, they'll claim to be powerful, they'll claim to be honored, they'll be comfortable, but he says true Christ followers will often endure the exact opposite. They'll be called fools. They'll be looked at as weak. See, when I tell people I have extreme faith in God, people can give me a look that shows me they think I'm weak. How can you put that much trust in God to get you through this bad thing? You've got to go do something. No, I'm putting my faith in God. And they'll look at me like I'm a fool. They'll call me weak. We'll be ridiculed. Paul says we'll be hungry, we'll be thirsty, we'll be cold, we'll be weary. Wow, it's a great sales pitch, right? <laughs> but the encouragement is he walked through it too. And it's part of what we're promised if we're followers of Christ because our reward comes later. He actually says here, we will be treated like the world's garbage. And that's where many of us are now. If you take a biblical stand, on things like marriage between a man and a woman. If you take a biblical stand on gender defined as male and female, because that's how God made us. If you take a biblical standard or stand on abortions wrong, it's, it's murder. If you take a biblical stand that sexuality is defined as a man and a woman having sex only in a marriage relationship, only male and female, you're going to experience much of what Paul is explaining here. You'll be standing up for God, but the world's going to try their best to make you look foolish and outdated and old-fashioned. And Be encouraged. Be like Paul. He says, I'm not saying this to shame you. I'm saying this to warn you. And then he says, imitate me. So guys, if you find your biblical stance being different from the world, praise God. As long as it's rooted in Scripture... It's different from the world. Praise God. You're imitating Paul. You're imitating his love and his dedication to Jesus. That's our encouragement. Paul's calling these people out. And I think his message to America would be exactly the same. And he finishes today with some strong words. He says, the kingdom of God is not just a lot of talk. It is living by God's power. A lot of people talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. And that's what he's saying. It's not about just a bunch of talk. It's about walking out, living in God's power. And then he says, what do you choose? Should I come with a rod to punish you? Or should I come with love and a gentle spirit? So he's asking them, how do you want me to rebuke you because you're doing some things wrong? Do you want me to come punish you? Or do you want me to come with a loving and gentle spirit to correct you? It's a beautiful example Paul's given us. You're going to be called unwise by the world. You're going to be laughed at. You're going to be called weak. But you can still deliver that message gently and in love. You have nothing to prove to the world. See, if we live a life like Ezra explains in Psalms 119, or a life like Paul explains here in 1 Corinthians 4, we will be disliked by the world. We will be ridiculed. We will be lied about. We will be persecuted. We will be hated. But I choose. I choose. I hope you will choose to still come with love and a gentle spirit rooted in God's word. Because I don't know about you, but I only care about pleasing God, not the world. I lived in the world. I don't want it anymore. I only care every day every moment about pleasing God. That doesn't mean I'm perfect in everything I do. That's where His grace comes in. I'm trying every day to get closer to Him and be more Christ-like, but my thoughts are only on pleasing Him. I hope you're encouraged today, and I hope you have a great day.